Do you know what happens once you have applied to a job online? Today, with Andres, a hiring manager of the company TradeMe, we are going to be sharing what's the recruitment process with TradeMe, from the moment you apply online until you get a job offer. Hope you enjoy it. So I don't know much about other companies, but I can tell you about here at TradeMe, what we do. So we have a um, software called JobBite that we use. Okay. And uh, that a kind of has... Applicant tracking system. Exactly. And we, we kind of use that one to track any um, CVs, any interview, calendar events, all the things that are kind of handled by that. Okay. Um, Who is responsible for the first stage of screening? So I'm Santiago. I applied mm -hmm. to trade me through trade me yeah. uh, jobs. Trade me receives my CV or resume uh, via Jobbyte. Mm -hmm. uh, who does that first screening of the CV? So it normally is the hiring manager. So it would be me. Okay. So HR doesn't really screen people for us. Okay. Uh, but HR will be there uh, chasing us if we are not screening the people. So let's say you submit your CV, and I've been so busy at work that I haven't opened JobVite in a couple of days. Then HR will come to me and say, hey, you have all these people pending that apply for this job and you need to go and action on them. Okay. Uh, so the email that you get when you first submit is an automated email that we have, like we're looking into it. And that means that it's there in the queue, right? Okay. So then I'll go through your CV and I'll go and, and read uh, the whole CV. Before I do that, though, I like reading the cover letter. Okay. Uh, so normally people will submit a cover letter as well, and it's all in the same application, and I can see that cover letter. Because I want to understand who this person is, who is applying, okay. and why are they applying for the role. Okay. What I want to see in the cover letter is that they know what job they're applying to. Um, and I've been on the other side, right? I know that when you are looking for a job, sometimes you're desperate to find a job, so you apply to everything under the sun, and you don't pay much attention because you just want to get a job. Uh, the problem is that for, for me now being a hiring person is that I want someone that actually wants to do the job that we're hiring for and that has the training on the job that I'm looking for. So what I expect to see in the cover letter are uh, for them to use keywords that show that they read the ad, right? So I want them to say, if I'm saying I need a C-sharp developer, I want them to say I have C-sharp experience, for instance. Or if I say I want someone that has some agile experience I wanted to say I work with scrum or Kanban or XP or whatever they want to say but something acknowledging the uh, job ad that they had there that's kind of the main thing that I want to see CVs uh, you probably want to see relevant skills on the CVs uh, sometimes you get a CV that is like a blanket of every skill under the sun and a lot of them might not be uh, skills that match the job that you're looking for so for instance if I'm looking for a that a developer and you have a lot of experience in data science and you put all of your experience of data science there and all your skills there but I don't see anything about that net then that's a bit of a red flag for me because the job that I even though data science is amazing and we are super keen on that right now the position that I need to fill is for someone who can do that net so that kind of scares me a bit about that okay. um, so basically is whoever who is submitting their CV to make sure that they are putting emphasis in describing their skills that match the job description that they have seen or the job advert they have seen on that portal. Correct, exactly. And when I go through the job history on the CV, because everyone puts their job history, I want to see that in the job history to demonstrate that they use some of the skills. It doesn't have to be all of the skills. No one has all of the skills and we're okay. happy to train people. Can you right? give one very specific example? Of a skill that I want? Yeah. Um, Okay. For example, now you're hiring, I understand. Yeah, yeah we're hiring. Uh, what is one thing that you're really looking after in, in candidates and how they could represent that in their CV? So right now we are hiring for a full stack developer, which means we want someone that can do, we're hiring many things, but I am hiring a yeah. full stack developer. And I want someone that can tell me that they've done something with database, something uh, in the back end, specifically with .NET and some front end, uh, could be Angular, React, or anything like that. So when I go through the CV, I want to see that they either use TypeScript or Angular, you know, or React. How, how they should describe that they have used TypeScript or React more than naming TypeScript or React? What, what examples would you like to, to see? Or, I, or, or if you would be applying, what would you describe? Well, I would, I would talk, let's say, in the last company, you worked in a website and it was a React-based website. I would say something in, in the description like uh, help build a, a single page application using React and then specific 
things about React or Angular, let's say using components and using SAS and you're naming the things that you're using, but you're also making sure that the things that, that you name are related to each other and relevant. So you're kind of building up on, you're just not using the keyword React or Angular or Vue. You're so basically you're using the different tools you used and for what? Exactly. Exactly. So you can say something like, and we needed to do state management. So we have NGRX and that's like a big plus because then I understand that you know what the tool was for instead of you just blanket listing. Uh, I completely understand. Logis. Cool. Great. What happens when you say, cool, yeah, this, this CV, this cover letter makes sense. Uh, I would like to get to know this person. What happened then? So if I like the cover letter and the CV, then we kind of have two big steps. The first one is, uh, and something that we really care about here at Trame is culture fit. Uh, so we have an interview with one of the uh, dev managers and they will go and ask you questions about uh, your last company, what things you like, what things you didn't like, and what are your strengths and that kind of thing. Uh, what are your hobbies? Because we want to know a bit about you. We want to know if you are a person that we want to have uh, around working with mm. us, you know, we want to see what drives you as well. After that feedback, we decide, okay, yep, yeah, we, we probably want to do some technical aspect of it. So what we do at the moment is we send you a tech test. So we send you a little um, readme file, actually, with okay. and it will get to your email and it's a readme file on a Bitbucket repo where you clone that and it has all the instructions of you what, what you have to do. So I reckon that everything goes smoothly. Uh, it might take up to three weeks for okay. a person to get uh, an answer back. Um, maybe we move faster if the candidate is truly exceptional. If we know that we really need to hire this person because they are definitely interviewing for someone else and they're definitely going to be snatched by some other company, then we try to move faster. Um, having said that, sometimes if the candidate doesn't perform that great, but doesn't perform terrible either, uh, so let's say has an average performance all through the interview, uh, we might wait for other candidates who are at the same time applying to decide. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're on the fence for someone saying, yeah, yeah. maybe we could hire them, but we wait to see the other two that yeah. might be at the same time. But you want to again. compare with, with other people applying for the role and really try to hire the best. Exactly. If you interview 10 candidates, how many of them would be hired? Uh, probably one. Probably one. Cool. Usually, do you find uh, something that it comes with every candidate in, in the reason why you are not hiring those other candidates, like those nine? What it is that they're missing? Is there something in common that usually people don't have? Some people, I guess, like the, uh, what I'm thinking is the people that I normally hired over the other nine are people who I can tell through their interview that they know what they're talking about. They might not know everything about everything, but they might be experts on a specific uh, subject, right? So okay. they might be really good at, let's say, front end or back end or databases or something within the stack that they want to work. And they're really good at communicating to me that they are good at it. Uh, well, the other people that I don't hire tend to be a bit, uh, yeah, you, you can see from the way that they uh, speak, I guess, or the way that they don't. Uh, show that passion or that confidence either. Okay. Uh, so I guess a lack of confidence might be something that uh, puts a lot of people back and down and what make me hire them.